factory worker father? Breaking off the engagement. As soon as she said that, Edith, my mother-in-law, threw her coffee at my dad. Beside her, laughing, my father-in-law, John, made no move to stop Edith. Coffee stains quickly spread across the suit dad had specially cleaned for this day. Fortunately, the coffee was lukewarm and there was no risk of a burn. I offered dad a handkerchief in surprise, while Timothy frantically tried to clean his suit. While worrying about any injuries, Timothy scolded his parents, who just kept laughing. During this, dad said nothing, simply stood up, pointed at them, and declared. Then I'll just have to ruin your company. He said this in a voice I had never heard before, took my hand, and we left the house. Behind us, Timothy's shouts at his parents echoed, and soon he followed us. I'm terribly sorry. I'll make sure my parents apologize later. No need. It's over. We're cutting ties. He said somberly, patting Timothy on the shoulder. My name is Penelope, a 26-year-old office worker. My family has a bit of a unique situation, I grew up without a mom. She passed away when I was young, and dad raised me single-handedly. Despite being busy as a factory manager, he never missed a school event. He'd often rush back to work after these events, but I've always respected him deeply for it. During college, I dated Timothy, who was two years my senior. He was gentle, sincere, and popular at university. Despite knowing it was a long shot, I confessed to him and he accepted. However, Timothy had his worries, mainly about his parents. He spoke of them only in vague terms, never delving into details. It seemed there was some conflict with them, but I didn't press, though it troubled me. Still, Timothy himself was flawless, so our relationship continued. He lived alone since starting university but occasionally visited his parents. He'd return exhausted, clearly stressed about them. He always put me first, making him my pride and joy. I had always wanted to introduce him to dad, the man I respected and my beloved boyfriend. I wondered how they would react to each other. One day, while on a date, we unexpectedly bumped into dad. Oh, dad. Aren't you supposed to be at work? What are you doing here? Ah, uh, Penelope. Just returning from a client. And who's this? Oh, this is Timothy. We're dating. Dad, not usually stern but with a somewhat fierce look, can be misunderstood. Timothy was very nervous meeting Dad for the first time. Nice to meet you, I'm Timothy. I am fortunate to be dating Penelope. Timothy greeted Dad quickly in a tense manner. Dad warmly accepted him, chatting and laughing with him. So, you're Penelope's boyfriend. Don't be so nervous. Take good care of her. Yes, I will. Thank you. As they continued talking, Timothy's nervousness faded, and they got along well. I was relieved to see the two most important men in my life getting along. I had worried about Dad's reaction, but he had to return to work. So we parted ways. After Dad left, I turned to Timothy, who seemed to be in a daze. When I asked what was wrong, he suddenly became excited. That was really your dad, right? I was puzzled by his unexpected words, but since it was the truth, I answered without hesitation. Yes, that was my dad. Is there something wrong with that? Right, that makes sense, that was him, huh? He crossed his arms and seemed lost in thought for a while. Curious, I decided to ask him what was on his mind. What are you thinking about so hard? Did you not like him? No way, that's not it. I do like him, but, well. His hesitant reply was all I got, and any further questions were evaded. I became anxious as he wouldn't tell me the reason. I wondered if, despite his words, he actually found it hard to get along with my dad. And so, I began to worry unnecessarily. A few days later, Timothy called me out, saying he had something important to talk about. Maybe because of the recent meeting with my dad, I felt unusually nervous as I went to our meeting spot. When I arrived at the cafe, he was already there. Through the glass, I could see him looking downcast. This deepened my anxiety, but I decided to act cheerfully anyway. 
As I entered the cafe and approached him slowly, I said. Timothy, sorry, did you wait long? I crept up behind him and spoke. Tapping his shoulder, which startled him. Penelope, you scared me. Startled, he caught his breath as he saw me. And I was surprised to see how much I had startled him. He had been that deep in thought. Sitting opposite the still gloomy him, I placed our order. His continued gloom only increased my anxiety. Desperate to hear what was on his mind, I spoke to him. Hey, Timothy. What's bothering you so much? Didn't he like my dad? When I asked, Timothy looked up and immediately denied it. No, not at all. I actually respect your dad. That's why my... My... He stopped mid-sentence and looked down again, causing me to sigh. Realizing I had no choice but to press for an answer, I asked directly. If you have a problem, I want to know. What's troubling you? He took a deep breath as if making up his mind, then began to share. I have something to tell you about my parents. It's a long story, but I need you to hear it all. The story he shared was shocking. According to him, his parents lacked grace and only judged people by their education and jobs. He had suffered a lot because of them, as they habitually interfered with his life. Whenever he introduced a girlfriend, they would criticize her and drive her away. The women would leave, often in tears, breaking up with him. That's why he wanted to marry me but was troubled about bringing up his parents. But that's not a problem. We just don't have to involve them after getting married and endure only during the marriage proposal. Dad seemed to like Timothy, so what was the issue? I don't mind about that, it's okay. Dad liked you too, so don't worry. Really? That makes me happy. When I first met your dad, I was shocked to see how different he was from my own parents. I thought, if I marry Penelope, I'll become the son of such a great dad, even if it's just by marriage. But getting married means your parents become mine too, and I couldn't make up my mind. He brightened up when I mentioned dad liked him, but then he sighed deeply again. However, an idea seemed to strike him, and he looked up, apologizing. When we go to my parents to announce our marriage, can your dad come with us? I want them to know such an admirable person exists. It might not change them immediately, but I hope it will make them rethink. Okay. I'll talk to dad. But, I wish you had told me this more straightforwardly. Oh, sorry. I'll properly do it now. Realizing his oversight, he hastily made a proper marriage proposal. Having accepted his proposal, I decided to discuss it with dad. Initially reluctant, dad agreed to join us for the marriage proposal visit after Timothy asked. We then coordinated with Timothy to schedule a visit to his parents. On the day of the visit, we stood in front of Timothy's parents' house, all of us neatly dressed. It was my first time meeting Timothy's parents, and knowing their reputation made me nervous. Seeing us tense, dad chuckled and reassured us. Don't be so stiff. Timothy's parents are just overly concerned. Be confident. Feeling reassured by dad's pat on our shoulders, my tension eased slightly. As the appointed time arrived, Timothy rang the doorbell. But there was no sound inside, making us wonder if they were not home. In a bit of a panic, Timothy rang the bell again, but still no response. Feeling awkward in front of dad, Timothy excused himself and went inside first. Dad and I exchanged glances, waiting silently for Timothy to return. After a short while, Timothy reappeared at the entrance, looking flustered. Before I could ask what happened, he started making excuses with a forced smile. Sorry, I was just delayed. Please wait a bit longer, I'll be ready soon. He quickly went back inside. Dad sighed in disbelief at this behavior, and I felt increasingly anxious. I feared this incident might derail the marriage talks. Though Dad is not quick-tempered, he dislikes dishonesty. So, I couldn't help but consider the worst-case scenario. As these thoughts crossed my mind, Timothy finally came back to the entrance. Apologizing, he invited us inside. Inside, Timothy's parents were already sitting on the sofa, but their demeanor was strange. 
Edithum, his mother greeted us with a sarcastic smile and arrogant attitude, while John, his father seemed disinterested and looked away. Though we were led to the sitting room, the coffee served was lukewarm. Silent since our arrival, Timothy's behavior and the tense atmosphere made me uneasy. However, knowing we needed to greet them, I tried to compose myself. As Timothy introduced his parents and us, I felt warmth in my heart from his considerate introduction of dad and me. But his parents scoffed at our introduction, and the next moment, Edith's hand reached for her cup, shocking me. Factory worker father? Breaking off the engagement. As soon as she said that, Edith threw her coffee at dad. Beside her, laughing, John made no move to stop Edith. Coffee stains quickly spread across the suit he had specially cleaned for this day. Fortunately, the coffee was lukewarm, and there was no risk of a burn. I offered Dad a handkerchief in surprise, while Timothy frantically tried to clean Dad's suit. While worrying about injuries, Timothy scolded his parents, who just kept laughing. During this, Dad said nothing, simply stood up, pointed at them, and declared, Then I'll just have to ruin your company. He said this in a voice I had never heard before, took my hand, and we left the house. Behind us, Timothy's shouts at his parents echoed, and soon he followed us. I'm terribly sorry. I'll make sure my parents apologize later. No need. It's over. We're cutting ties. Dad said somberly, patting Timothy on the shoulder. Then we went back to our house with Timothy, and Dad immediately changed his clothes. Meanwhile, Timothy earnestly apologized outside Dad's room with Dad's troubled voice occasionally heard. But I was too shocked by Edith's actions to pay much attention to anything else. From the moment I saw their faces, I knew getting along would be difficult due to their arrogant attitude. But I never expected them to do something like that, and I was furious that they belittled Dad. Sitting on the living room sofa and clenching my fists, I kept replaying the earlier events. I knew getting worked up wouldn't help, but I couldn't help myself. Eventually, Dad came into the living room after changing, followed by Timothy who immediately apologized to me. Penelope, I'm truly sorry. I had no idea they would do something like that, let alone belittle someone. I'm really sorry, I did a terrible thing. Timothy probably knew it wasn't something easily forgiven. The fact he didn't ask for forgiveness showed his sincerity. This made me feel like I should apologize to him. I took Timothy's hand, who was on his knees, and apologized. I'm sorry too for saying something so thoughtless without knowing anything. I never expected it to turn out like this. Then I turned to Dad to offer my deepest apology. Dad, I'm sorry too. My careless suggestion led to this mess. Dad just looked down and shrugged his shoulders in response to my apology. It's no wonder he didn't say anything. This situation was unexpected for everyone here. But this meant his earlier words might actually come true. I decided to ask him directly about his intentions. Dad, what you said to them earlier, was that true? Are you really planning to ruin their company? In response to my question, Dad looked at Timothy and then nodded firmly. Yes, it's true. I do intend to do it. His company's performance has been poor, and I've been thinking about what to do with it. It's a good opportunity to cut it off. Dad's eyes were serious and unwavering. He is the owner of a factory, a well-known leading local company where he started as a worker. He first worked as a worker at this factory. He gave up his dream of becoming a painter after mom passed away to raise me alone. Working tirelessly in the factory, his hard work was recognized and he climbed the ranks. Eventually, he was favored by the previous president and promoted repeatedly. When the previous president, or rather, the former factory manager wanted to retire, Dad was chosen to take over. The factory owns several subsidiaries. And one of them is managed by John, Timothy's father. This was revealed during the earlier greeting. John should have recognized this, but he failed to. As Edith acted first, before Timothy introduced him in detail. Timothy just wanted to say that Dad worked in the factory, which is the parent company of John's. 
but Edith and John's prejudice led to this unfortunate situation. If they had listened properly, this might not have happened. Dad said John's company seemed to be mismanaged. This could potentially affect Dad's factory, so he had been considering what action to take. I was thinking of layoffs to improve management, but I'd rather avoid that if possible. It seemed like the right time to make a cut. He smiled troubledly, probably not wanting to lay off employees. Regret tinged his words. After saying this, he turned to Timothy and said in a low voice, I've decided to do it, but it means your parents will be in trouble. It's harsh, but are you sure you're okay with this? Faced with this question, Timothy hesitated for a moment but then looked Dad in the eye and replied, I've already cut ties with them. They did unforgivable things. They need to atone for it, and I want them to reflect on this incident and everything else. More than that, I have a request. It's inappropriate at this time, but I must ask, please let me get engaged to Penelope. I'm aware of the trouble my parents caused. More than anything, I want to be with Penelope. Please allow it. Dad crossed his arms, deep in thought. It may seem inconsiderate right after such an incident. However, moved by Timothy's fervor, I also pleaded with Dad. I also ask you, Dad. Despite everything, I want to be with Timothy. After hearing our pleas, Dad hummed for a bit before shaking his head as if resigned. If both of you feel the same, then it's fine. But there's a condition. Your parents are business owners, after all. I want to know what will happen to their employees. If you can't answer that, your marriage is off. Dad said this and sent Timothy out, not even glancing at me before returning to his room. A few days later, Timothy came with a plan regarding John's company's employees. He had promised Dad beforehand and was discussing it when I returned from work. Apparently, Timothy had listed potential new jobs for all the employees and was showing it to Dad. So, I would like to ask, albeit presumptuously, for these employees to transfer to your company. I hope to support their employment there, contributing to the business's growth. Timothy was earnestly requesting Dad to hire them. And I know it's selfish, but I would like to join the company too. I'll work without salary until their work stabilizes and shows results. I want to compensate for the shortcomings with my work and salary. Once that's done, I'd like to marry Penelope. Timothy seemed to blame himself for the company's downfall. He wanted to work hard as a lubricant in the situation. I was just learning now that our marriage would be delayed, but it seemed unavoidable. Welcome back, Penelope. You heard, right? I'm sorry for deciding something so important on my own. But I couldn't be happy just myself. That's too much, Timothy. Dad, let me join the company too. I'll work alongside Timothy, so please accept his proposal. As I said this, Timothy tried to stop me. But I refused to back down and desperately begged Dad. While we were doing this, Dad remained silent. But after our repeated pleas, he finally unfolded his arms and quietly nodded. Meanwhile, Timothy's parents hadn't apologized yet. Dad had been waiting these past days, but that was coming to an end. Time's up. He muttered, beginning preparations to take over John's company. Time passed, and John's company finally collapsed. Then, Timothy received a furious call from his parents, and the three of us were summoned to their house. When we arrived at their home, it was crowded with people. They were all protesting the company's collapse, shouting angrily. John probably hadn't explained anything to the employees. By calling us there, it seemed they intended to shift their own blunders onto us. As soon as they spotted us, they began pointing and accusing. Look there! They're the cause of everything, not me. They destroyed the company, not me. It's true. Especially that woman, she seduced our son and ingratiated herself with his father. We're the victims here. So stop making such a fuss. As Timothy's parents ranted, trying to deflect from themselves. Although he got angry with his parents saying whatever they want, 
he was trying to soothe the protesting crowd. Please wait, everyone. Yes, my father's company collapsed, but it's because of those two. And I've arranged job placements for all of you. Please hear me out. The crowd gradually quieted down, and they began listening to us. Timothy read out each person's name, informing them of their next job. The former employees who realized that they won't get laid off seemed relieved. After announcing everyone's new positions, Timothy's parents started causing a scene. Hey, Timothy. What about us? Why ignore us? Tell us our job placements. If you do, we'll forgive that man and even approve your marriage to that woman. Ignoring their wailing, Timothy began explaining the circumstances of the company's downfall. The former employees who realized that they won't be laid off seemed relieved. Which is why I'm truly sorry for the trouble. Thanks to our generous president, your jobs are saved. Please, let's start anew without anger. Turning to dad, Timothy gave an expression of gratitude. We've caused so much trouble. Thank you for indulging our selfishness. I promise to work diligently. The former employees, moved by Timothy's actions, also appreciate D to dad. Amidst this, his parents were the only ones dissenting. Don't be fooled. That man destroyed the company, and she instigated it. Face reality. You've lost your jobs because of them, right? Just because they've helped you now doesn't mean you should lose sight of the truth. Despite their desperate appeals, no one paid any attention to Timothy's parents. Especially after hearing the whole story from Timothy earlier. Even Dad ignored their words. As the former employees looked on, hoping for reassurance, Dad told them that he would inform them of the details later, which brought voices of relief. The employees left the house. Once everyone was gone and it became quiet, Timothy's parents started complaining about how they couldn't live anymore. The company's collapse means we'll lose this house, which was the collateral. Yes, exactly. Where are we supposed to live now? Timothy sighed in exasperation at his parents, who were determined to blame us. It's obviously your own fault. Maybe it's time you learned a bit of self-reflection. He rebuked them, but it seemed they had no intention of listening. Unable to bear it anymore, I finally burst out in anger. After all the trouble you've caused Timothy, getting carried away because you were business owners. Isn't this all because you only cared about titles? My words prompted them to retort. But Dad intervened, not letting them speak. A business owner is responsible. Taking responsibility is part of the job. Do your last duty properly. Receiving a stern scolding from each of us, they were left speechless. Leaving the two of them behind, we departed from there. Eventually, they lost everything, the company, the house, and the land. They didn't offer any compensation to the former employees and seemed to have dodged the issue. However, having lost everything, they ended up arrested for Dynandash. They contacted Timothy for help, but he coldly refused, having cut ties with them. They're probably in jail now. Since then, we've received no contact from them. Even if they got out, they still had to atone for their actions towards the former employees. Timothy and I quit our jobs and joined Dad's company. For the first few months, we lived off our savings and worked without a salary, as promised. One day, we met some of the employees from Timothy's parents' company. Recognizing us, they rushed over eagerly shaking our hands, expressing gratitude for the new job. And thanking Dad for taking them in. They thanked Timothy for arranging it and thanked me for my help. I didn't remember, but I had helped them with some documents when they first joined. Grateful for everything, they left, saying they'd continue to work hard. Hearing this, we felt relieved and hurried to Dad's office. He warmly welcomed us in his office, and handed us thick envelopes. What is this? It's your unpaid salaries. It didn't all fit in one envelope, so there are several. Dad chuckled, leaving us astonished. We hadn't been here long enough to compensate for employing many new workers. Yet, we were being given our salaries. 
Bewildered, we just stood there. But Dad continued, thanking us. Thanks to you, they work with enthusiasm. They always express their gratitude and worry about you. I couldn't shame myself by not paying such excellent employees. And our performance has definitely improved. Thank you. Hearing this, we embraced and cried together. We had been so focused on ourselves that we're unable to see anything else around us. But more than that, we were moved by their concern for us. Then Dad said something even more heartwarming. Timothy, I'm impressed with your leadership. If my daughter agrees, will you marry her? Yes. Yes, of course. I promise I'll make her happy. With a tear-streaked face, Timothy promised me and Dad. I hugged him and cried together. So, we got married. We continue to work together at Dad's company, living happily. Gradually, work has become more efficient. Allowing us to have a broader view of the company, even discussing productivity with Dad. Timothy visits the factory and subsidiaries. Asking about inconveniences and proposing solutions, staying very busy. We both work with more passion than at our previous jobs. Finding fulfillment really does change one's work ethic. But soon, that will have to be put on hold. I'm taking maternity leave from Dad's company. Dad, Timothy, everyone at the company, and I are all looking forward to the arrival of our grandchild.